Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today, we're gonna to be doing a weekly meta breakdown, looking at the best performing MTG Arena decks for the timeless best of three format up to Mythic Rank. Uh, we're gonna look at date later, uh, ladder data, not later Hosens. Um, I did the best of one video, it's already in the playlist. We try to cover all the formats. For those folks looking for historic and explorer content, data is slowly coming in. To be completely honest, the Markov Manor has been a weird set i i feel like it's just not really been popular uh and we're just not seeing huge amounts uh, of like cool information like shake up stuff like that so i'm gonna hopefully have this stuff for next week for those sets but standard's been refreshed as well as i'm uh, getting through the timeless today before we jump into this i'm just gonna preface that uh untapped what we see on the screen where we're getting the data from uh they are i'm pretty sure it's a bug with just a special guest but show and tell as well as like crashing footfalls and then uh smuggler's copter in some of the other formats those are not showing up as searchable cards and i none of the data is coming in on it so show and tell while a very large player in the current meta is not showing up right now um so i am i did reach out to them to try to get that fixed so hopefully we get that and then we'll, I'll cover it in the next video, hopefully, with like what the best variation. The show and tell deck's particularly difficult because there's not one stock list. There's general cards that are played, but some are on the Fae of Wishes, some are on the Masterminds acquisition plan. So slightly different builds to that as well. Um, so like I said, we get the data from Untapped. Uh, companion tool tracks your win rates, throws it with other users, gives us cool stats. Linked for Untapped is below. Click it, follow it, let them know I sent you, helps out the channel. Uh, and then I will paste all these deck lists, timestamp them. We've got a lot today, actually. I think 13, 12 or 13. So we're going to go to deep dive. Uh, and we're going to start off with the popularity of decks. So as always, popular deck doesn't necessarily correlate to the highest win rate deck, but it's things that you can anticipate seeing quite a bit on the ladder. So because uh, about the first week, new set, we're doing platinum to mythic rank. I tried to do diamond to mythic, but it's only like 3,800 games played. So it's a relatively low population size. Uh, popularity decks, Rakdos Mitted, which is the uh, storm deck, Rakdos Storm, Underworld Breach at 14%, similar like with Mono Green Titan, just a shade under. And then Mono or Gem Midrange is also at 13.4. So kind of your three top pillars. I would anticipate show and tell just based on some of. The opponents I was running into probably is equally up there. I would say like low teens at the minimum. Uh, five color zoo at ten percent or nine percent. We got some Grixis Shadow in here. Demir Control a low threes. Saltai mid range, which can also include the Natural Order decks, and then Is It Phoenix at one percent. Uh, just kind of looking at the trends, we see pretty big drop off for Jung mid range in part because it is a little bit more of a fair deck. While you can have a little bit more discard, I feel like it's worse into the show and tell decks. I've found that with a lot of the fair decks, Titan kind of jumping up to meet it and kind of dropping down with the Rakdos midrange kind of surpassing it there. Uh, there is an uptick in terms of the zoo deck, which I actually find a little odd. I found the deck pretty bad into like the combo meta being a bit slow, uh, just in terms of like clunky mana base, but uh, Grixis Shadow is another one that we've seen kind of an increase as well. So uh, we'll focus on the decks themselves. Platinum to Mythic Rank, we're looking February 6th to the 16th, so about 10 days worth of data. Uh, we'll kind of cycle over with the weekly afterwards, but you can see like 14,000 games here at this parameter. If we drop it to Mythic or to Diamond, then we, we go only to 3,800, which starts getting fairly small in terms of our population size. Uh, I do have a cap of only 35 games just to get us a bit of a diversity. Obviously with such a small sample, some wins and losses does fluctuate quite a bit, uh, but it's kind of to give you ideas of what people are trying and seeing where the meta goes to. So jumping into it, Rakdos Mid was the most popular deck. It's also the highest win rate at 67%. Uh, and this is the Storm variant. So nothing really has changed from the, the past versions outside of the decks shifting to Death Rate Shaman in the main as a three of, and then the Regavans have moved to the sideboard. With the prominence of Bowmaster decks, it does help to have the death right, helps you ramp up ahead. I've I've been cutting like Regavans to like fewer and fewer copies in a lot of my decks, just given the prevalence of Bowmasters. But fair kind of mid-range deck, you could kind of grind them out. You have your death rights, death, uh, Dragon Rage Chandlers, 
citrus suppliers to fill your yards. Your thought seizes come in handy for the combo matchups. And then you basically get to a point where you fill your graveyard to some extent, cast on the world breach, and then start looping dark rituals. You can generate enough mana, and then if you can, stitch your supplier with Diabolic Intent to keep sacking the supplier to fill your graveyard to make meet that three card condition. Basically get to the point where either you tutor for Tendril of Agony or mill it over and then storm out your opponent. Uh, this is Alurus Companion. You have Graveyard Hate. Chromatic Spear could play around Blood Moon potentially. I would think maybe that's why. Uh, you, In case you don't hit it, you could hit your other mana. It also is a free kind of storm effect. Uh, once in play, kind of generates the mana that you put in, but or actually it's not free. You have to pay the one up front to get the storm. So it's an interesting inclusion. Let me know if, like, I think it's just to play around Blood Moon, but I could be wrong. Uh, needle for activated abilities, abrades, uh, feed the swarms, just kind of varied uh, anti combo pieces. So think in the sense like they have graveyard hate in terms of artifacts. You can hit with a braid, you can hit with Molten compla uh, Collapse if they're on Rest in Peace or Leyline. You can hit with Feed the Swarm, and then License Hearse of your own to eat away at your opponent's graveyards. So that is the Rakdos midrange. Before we jump into the next deck, just a quick reminder. We are trying to hit 15,000 subs on the channel. You see in the top right-hand corner, we got the ticker there. Um, we're just shy of 12,000. So if you haven't subbed to the channel, if you like these types of stats, we do them every week for every arena format as much as possible. Uh, just free information for you. Uh, it's free to sub, helps out the channel a lot. Thanks for those who have subbed. And if you have subbed, as always, likes and comments go a long way to help with the, the YouTube overlords. So greatly appreciate it if you can. Popping over, we have four color natural order. So this is from Arnie Hirschenbach. I always mess up his last name, I apologize. Uh, PT player, good player. Um, this was a list that I know during the metagame challenge he was having a lot of success with. It's basically a core kind of Sultai mid-range deck. And this is what I think like a lot of the Formic devolves around. You can have like a fair deck, but with elements of like an oops we combo. So like the Rakdos mid-range, you know, you're a fair Rakdos deck, but then you have the breach combo. In this particular deck here, you have things like your Deathrite Shamans, Halflings, you know, Thoughtseize, Fatal Push, stuff of that nature. But then you also just accidentally on turn three, with any of your dorks, including Paradise Druid, Natural Order, into either Atraxa or Coma. Uh, so that kind of cheats them out that way there. You have Okos in here, an Uro, Demonic Tutor, assemble the team for tutor effects kind of mixed into there. Uh, so some value in that respect. Your sideboard, you have Pithing Needles, Activated Abilities, Spell Pierce for Disruption, Veil of Summer for Counters, or like Black Base Removal or Discard, Tear Asunder, Flexible Removal. And then Ashiok's a really nice hate piece. Messes up your opponent's fetches, messes up their tutors. So if they're using like Beseech or stuff to kind of tutor for things, you can hit them that way there. Really good against the Titan Field matchup. Uh, the one thing that we'll cover in the team or mid range deck in a couple spots, but some of these decks, what they've been doing is for the show and tell matchup, they're actually playing Agent of Treachery. Uh, so that's something that some of these decks are playing because your opponent flashes in omniscient or shows omniscience. You can show Agent of Treachery and steal their omniscience or steal their Atraxa. There's technically a window where they can still win the game. Uh, if they omniscience and then have Born to the Winds, they can still combo at instant speed. But it is a nice little kind of avenue to push through that kind of combo there. Then we go to five color reanimator. It's more five color creativity um, in this particular list. It is, it's really Jeskai Green Traxa. Jeskai Green Traxa, but your creativity deck. Um, so creativity, none of other creatures in the deck other than a Traxa. You can make tokens with Fable the Mirror Breaker, Oko, or Minskin Boo, and then that allows you to cheat and to play Traxa. For this particular deck as well, you'll see the three of Dwarven Mine. So we see a lot of the blue uh, utility line that gets you back um, any of your instants or sorceries, while Dwarven Mine is also a mountain that can be tutored. With fetch lines, it's a lot easier to hit the multiple mountains. So you'll notice all the lines in the deck are mountains or fetches, including some of the triumphs. Uh, so it gets you that ability to hit that. Uh, this is a domain deck, so you have Leyline Bindings through the Triomes, Brainstorms, Bolts, Spell Pierce, Swords, the Plowshare, Reprieve, kind of all mixed into there. Uh, I don't know how good it'd be in here, but I was playing the uh, Is It Creativity deck, the Gearhawk version in Explore, and deduce the new 2-mana draw card, and then 
uh, investigate was really good as well. Now, no, normally against like a bowmaster meta, you don't want to draw too much, but for two mana, it both gets you closer to the combo and then makes you a token as well. Uh, so some interesting lines there. Sideboard, you have Light of Hope, gains your life, blows up an enchantment. Uh, so if you want to hit anything like that, cheap that way, more spell pierces for disruption, stern scolding for bowmasters, lurus deck, stuff like that. Helix for some life gain and removal, rest in peace for graveyard hate. Tendrils decks, you have Weather the Storm, uh, you have Teferis for kind of the control matchups. Sarah's Emissary can be swapped in for tracks in certain matchups. Certain decks just can't beat a Sarah's Emissary, especially if they're like dedicated creatures or stuff like that. Or even against, say, some of like the Necro decks, or uh, I believe the uh, Belcher targets, I'm, I'm fairly certain. So you can actually name Artifact and get that way there. And then uh, a Plains for the Blood Moon matchup, you could f uh, f fetch for that as well. Um, so. Port and over, we got Grixis Shadow, 64%. And this time it's actually a Death Shadow deck. Sometimes it gets the Tainted Pact of the deck and labeled as Grixis Shadow. But um, it's base black red. And we I played a gem version of this during the metagame challenge. And I really liked the elements of it. So you have Death Shadow, Death Rite Shaman, DRC. You have the Lightning Bolts. Stalactite type Stalker is a really sweet card here. Through all the fetches, you're descending a lot. Your Bobble descends. Uh, through Inti, just discarding you at Descend as well. And then this keeps growing, it's Menace, and it can be used as removal as well. Uh, just a bunch of removal with the deck. You have Thought Seizes in here for Disruption, Spell Pierces, Counters, or not Spell Pierce, Stubborn Denial. Uh, this deck, I think, suits Stubborn Denial much better than the Zoo deck. Because in the Zoo deck, like, you have Kavu, you might have Nashiba Brawler, but, like, your one drops don't enable it. This, you actually have ways to enable it fairly easy. Um, Treasure Cruise to refill your hand, Scourge as well as another large creature, and then Inti here can give any of these creatures Trample, which helps. Um, and then just a bunch of Shock Lands and Fetches to enable the life loss. Lurus Companion, Fatal Pushes with removal, Graft Digger Cage for like natural order decks, anything cheating stuff out of the graveyard as well. Notably, Creativity gets around this because it's Exile as the show and tell because it puts into play from your hand, not any of those other zones. Thicker Poison, Artifact, Enchantment, or Creature with Flying Hate, also a nice way to pick off a Traxa for one mana. Pithing Needles for uh, activated abilities, Soul Guy Lantern, more Stubborn Denials, Graveyard Hate, and this is like pretty much very similar to the sideboard we were playing in Jun when we were talking, oh, me and my buddy were talking for some of the versions. The Jun version is actually doing a bit worse right now. It's at 52%, I think, in show and tell having the counters better. But against the Field of the Dead matchup, which is a pretty tough matchup, uh, you sideboard out of the Lurus into Rampaging Ferocidon. And it pretty much wins that matchup there, as long as you can kind of get enough of a board presence. If they turn three Titan on the play, it's a little hard. Um, but usually for Ossadon can lock up those last points of damage. Similarly, it's pretty decent against the Yogg matchup as well. In Yogg, with this deck, they do bring in like Fatal Pushes and stuff like that, but it's a good way to shut off the life gain. Also, just like the odd Amalia deck that I always seem to run into, it's nice there. Uh, we then go to Teamer Midrange. So this is the deck uh, I featured this week. It's kind of a new deck in the format. I liked it a lot. So when I had featured it earlier this week, it was 37 games played. It was a 73% win rate. I did put out a video on it. It's dropped a bit in terms of win rate, but I went 3-0 with it in best of three. Really, really liked the deck. Took down Show and Tell, took down Zoo, took down Boros Burn. And it's got a lot of the elements. So it's kind of like a, well, it's pretty much full teamer, but uh, Dragon Rage Chandler, Bolts, you have your Ragavans. Um, so kind of your aggressive is a deck, you have the Unholy Heats in here too. Full Molten Impact set, uh, Expressive Iterations, Druids, and Tarmogoyce. The one thing, I would probably just cut the Lelia to be honest. I never wanted to really cast this on curve. Uh, I always wanted like Jar Soul or any of my other threats. I would play the second Spell Pierce main, and I would probably play the other Questing Druid main, or even just another Minsk. Spell Pierce was really clutch in a lot of these matchups. Goyf gets really big really quickly. Uh, and then just Jarsil rebuying your threats was, was really impressive in the deck. Um, so there's that. And then notably this version, it's not really a Blood Moon deck, 
it's more just kind of playing your fast lines kind of tempo. The one thing I will say is if you're going to play this, I would just cut the Ketria Triome. Just play like another fetchable duel. Uh, I would play like Stomping Ground again in here. Just another copy. The Ketria Triome was a little awkward at times. Your curve's so low that you generally are not tap fetching for a tap line in this deck. Um, and most of the time I just wanted like the untapped duel more than anything. Uh, cage for like things cheating into play, more spell pierces, veils, aether gusts, and licensers, and then the agent of treacheries uh, for the show and tell matchup. The only other card, like you may want something like a braid or uh, cinder vines, maybe something to consider as well after some more games, but I really like this deck. Um, I have a video on it, all the matches are recorded. Like, Really, really good gameplay. I found it very, very fun. I would probably, with the next iteration, just make those small changes. Now we got four color Yogg, which is really Golgari Yogg. Um, so this deck here is another one of those fair mid range that's got a couple different combos. So same idea as the Saltai Natural Order. Oops, I just Natural Order into Atraxa or Crater Hoof Behemoth. This version here, because you're playing a lot of like small creatures, Crater Hoof's really powerful. Uh, you also have the Yogg combo in this particular deck. So Yogg Moth. With conjunction of like either two young wolves or a hapatra in a young wolf basically lets you keep sacking you redistribute the minus counters onto young wolf to reset the undying if you have two young wolves they kind of target each other so you can basically draw a whole bunch of cards with conjunction of like prosperous innkeeper you offset the life loss but with blood artist in you drain your opponent out you can find two combo pieces with court of calling as well um, so it's kind of it. You have your death rites, halflings, once upon a time, bowmasters, all that jazz in there. Uh, you also have like Kalani Garden, for example. Uh, very similar removal options, activated abilities, veils, Phyrexian Revokers, another Pithing Needle style effect you can tutor with Corticalling, Pylons, a removal spell that can be cast for free through Convoke, Elven Chorus for the Grindier matchups, lets you play uh, Tishana's Tidebinder not technically castable outside of like either death right shaman being activated or courting it in for response but could be nice against the activated abilities then we go to five color zoo um so i do have a video on this as well we tried it out with the breakout card um so breakout here it's kind of like a mini collected company you look at top six cheat into play a creature with two cmc or less and give it haste which is really nice with your big creatures. The one thing I found with the deck, there's a little bit higher percentage of whiff. You're only playing 21 creatures. Usually in Coco Shells, you're playing like 25 to like 30 creatures. There's a couple games where we either whiffed or just like even hitting finding one at a six didn't really give us a lot of optionality in terms. Uh, I did play, this looks exactly like my list to be honest or very close to it. Um, I was on the Ferocidon plan. But kind of similar idea. Uh, I did the split of Death Rite and Ragavan as well. We went back to the Stubborn Denial. Originally, I was trying to not play Stubborn Denial, but with all the combo, you kind of need it. But in like this deck here, like I said, like the only things that get with Stubborn Denial are Nashiva Brawler and Kavu once you have Domain. But this deck's also incidentally kind of weak to Blood Moon uh, in a way because you're playing all these duels, which kind of shuts off some of the power of Domain, but can be an aggressive deck as well. Uh, Gigantic Companion, uh, just more, we're seeing a lot of these same, similar hate pieces, Strict Proctors, nice against anything, looking with them to the battlefield effects, Yogg decks, stuff like that to kind of mess them up. Um, then we have Mono Green Titan, uh, speaking of cards that is good, Strict Proctor, pretty solid against the Mono Green deck. So the innovation that we've seen with the Titan deck is the full set of Archdruid Charm, Three mana, go find whatever utility land you want, put it into play. So it's three mana instant speed ramp. Uh, it's also got a like deal damage fight condition, and it also has uh, exile target hate piece, whether it be artifact or enchantment. So get rid of that blood moon, get rid of that graph digger's cage, pretty much anything except Ashiok. Um, we're also seeing kind of an inclusion now back to the Titan of Industry. This is good against the show and tell deck. While not great against the Atraxa, technically could trade in combat, it does blow up omniscience upon entering the battlefield. Again, technically they could still combo at instant speed with Born to the Wilds or whatever that Lord of the Rings card is, um, but that's kind of the, the tech there. Uh, we're seeing the Surveil Land also included in the deck now. 
Um, sideboard, very clean. We protect ourselves from counters and, and removal. We blow things up with Geth Lost against Storm decks. We get Weathered Runestone. Notably here, non-land permanent cards in graveyards and library can't enter the battlefield. This does stop natural order in the deck. And then Rex Sage as a tutor or just a creature that can blow up more artifacts and enchantments. Moving on, Jun Midrange, 58%. Uh, this looks pretty stock all things. We see a Molten Collapse find its way into the main board. The two of Blood Moons, full Minsk on the top end. You got some Tarmos in here, and then just like your full removal package. Full seven discard, which is nice. Uh, particularly well with Jar Soul as well. Just discard the hell out of all the combo decks and then just throw a threat down and try to win that way there. Uh, this version here, we're seeing Blackleaf Cliffs in there included now, as well as Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Your basics are included as well. You got the Companion. Uh, again, just kind of more removal options. Actually, what's pretty interesting with this one here, no copies of Lightning Bolt in the main. Single copy in the side, uh, but opting for Unholy Heat and just a heavier discard package this time here. So actually, that's I missed that at first, but that's kind of interesting. Uh, more Blood Moons, some Clothis. I, I, I'm kind of torn on Clothis. The theory of it's very good, but it's very slow in terms of graveyard hate. It's it's pretty solid against like the Demir control deck, but that deck's fairly low representative, and they're usually going to bring an Aether Gust against you anyways. But like it's slow against the Breach deck. It's slow, I guess like mono black devotion or like the necro decks, it's okay, but they can also kind of get you through storm winds that way there. But slaughter game for combo decks, pulse is kind of a reasonable threat against like the zombies from Field of the Dead. We've got an Is It Phoenix deck next, 57%. Um so bunch of looting effects, hope hopefully kill the bowmaster before you start brainstorming and faithless looting. Um, but the kind of core of the deck is get Phoenix into your yard through Surveil, Discard, uh, it's like that. Play three instants or sorceries, get it back. So just kind of repetitive ways there. Treasure Cruise refills your hand. You got Spell Pierces as Disruption to kind of support yourself as well. Um, again, Needles, Stern Scolding for Bowmasters. We have Cast into the Fire, nice clean answer to the Bowmaster, One Ring, stuff like that. Defabricate, counter target activated or triggered ability, or counter target artifact or enchantment spell. Uh, interesting one there. Probably, I guess it's like a stifle with some hate piece a staple to it. Interesting. Uh, negates, unlicensed heiress, blood moon for like the greedy mana bases, and mystical dispute as well. It's interesting with this one, sometimes you will see the folks bring in alternative win conditions that are not impacted by Graveyard Hate. Um, this one, because like you could have answers to things like the Artifact Hate, but there's not really a clean answer to something like a uh, Rest in Peace or a Ley Line, for example. Like the Fabricate doesn't counter it, like Ley Line on the stack, turn zero. Then move to Bant Control. So let's stifle some fetch lands on turn one. Um, so we got Death Rites, the whole kind of one mana removal package, including Stifle, six counter spells. You got some Archmage Charm, full set of Uro, card you don't see to that volume usually in the format. Oko and Uro are your main win conditions, technically Death Rite as well. Lauren Reveal, Leyline Bindings through the Ragon Triumph and Zagoth. You can fetch them early. Mystic Sanctuary rebuys you your spells. Uh, plays around Blood Moon, Narset for card draw decks, Ashiok for kind of tutor decks, Gus, Scoldings, Needles, and Deafening Silence. So different type of control deck in the format here. Then lastly we have Golgari Belcher at 57%. Uh, so we're actually going to check here. Deals damage equal to, to any target. So yeah, uh, the the Sarah's Emissary does protect you from Char Belcher. But the deck itself is looking to cheat out Goblin Char Belcher as early as possible, leveraging like a whole bunch of cheap artifacts, dark rituals, Beseech to kind of find it. Uh, you can, depending on how your hand's situa situated, Beseech for Channel. If you have Belcher in hand, you can kind of combo that same turn. Um, so kind of interesting ways there. Haze of Pollen's an interesting inclusion here. Uh, just as a fog that can be cycled. 
all your lands in the deck are the module dual face lines which mean uh, you can always basically deal huge chunks of damage you can color filter even through blood moon through things like chromatic star or the wizards rockets stuff of that nature uh, early removal hand hates anti counter fog effects and assassin's trophy for hate pieces included there so that's it for the week let me know what you've been playing what you've been thinking of the format and uh, like I said, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, greatly appreciate it if you can. I'm trying to hit that 15,000 by June, so it'd be awesome if we could. So thanks, everyone. Stay safe out there. And to my Canadians, happy Family Day weekend.